everybody, welcome to another episode. My name is Kevin Sidwar and this is episode 32 of Daily IoT. Now, I did a video uh, a few months ago where I talked about how you should just pick a platform, jump into IoT, and not have what I called platform paralysis. I'll like put the video up here somewhere if you wanna check that out. Where I basically said, don't get hung up with all the platforms that are available, just pick one and get started. But what I have failed to do since then, and I've been meaning to do, is talk about the different platforms that I at least have experience uh, using and talk about uh, the good and the bad and, and what's great about them so that you have a better idea of maybe uh, what, what platform you can choose. And so I wanted to start this week by doing that. And we're gonna start with, uh, you can probably guess, the Particle Photon. I've been spending a lot of time on it lately. And basically I'm gonna go through a bunch of categories here. And the first one is total cost. Now you'll see as I talk about some of these platforms as I make these videos, what you pay for uh, the actual development platform, Internet of Things platform, is very different than the total cost. And the example I always give to people is the Raspberry Pi. And we'll talk more about that when I do one on the Raspberry Pi specifically, but people see this $35, $25, $10 uh, for a Raspberry Pi, but what they don't realize is that $35 Raspberry Pi 3 won't even turn on when you get it in the box dropped off on your front porch. You need a power supply, you need an SD card, you need a bunch of things to get it up and running. And so when I say total cost, I'm not saying what you can go to a website for and buy the platform for, I'm saying this is the cost that it takes to get up into at least a basic state where you can make an Internet of Things project. And so just a little background on that, the total cost for the Particle Photon, I'm gonna put it right around $25. Now, they're $19 for a Photon with or without headers. I recommend you get it with headers so that you can stick it into a breadboard. Um, and then you're gonna pay shipping. And then also, if you don't already have one, most people do, let me grab one here. You're gonna need a USB uh, cable to connect it to your computer. Now, the basic Photon does not come with one. Most people have one of these, but just in case you don't, you can pick one up for a couple bucks on Amazon. So I figured that into the total cost, which by the way is probably the lowest cost Internet of Things platform that I'm aware of that has Wi-Fi built in. Now, people are gonna say the Raspberry Pi and I, and I get it, but again, we're talking total cost, being able to plug it in and actually work on a project it's one of the lowest cost platforms out there. Next up, we're gonna talk about connectivity. Now, on the Particle Photon, you have the Broadcom Wi-Fi chip on board. So right out of the box, you have Wi-Fi ready to go. There's not a lot of complicated Linux things that you need to do because it doesn't run Linux, but there's some platforms where Wi-Fi is on board, but there's a little bit to set it up. The Intel Edison was a great example of that, where it did have Wi-Fi on board, but man, it was a little bit of a stretch sometimes to get that thing going. You had to get down to the command line and configure things. On the, the Photon, you can easy, either use their phone app or the command line interface to set up the Wi-Fi. In most cases, you just have to give it the passcode and you should be good to go. Now, one thing to note though, is that the, the Photon cannot handle these Wi-Fi networks that require extra negotiation. And what I mean by that, like uh, my biggest example is a hotel Wi-Fi where you have to sometimes put in your room number and your last name and things like that to be able to get onto the network. The Photon is not going to be able to handle that. You will not be able to connect your Photon to the hotel's Wi-Fi. So, but otherwise, Wi-Fi on board, ready to go, very simple to set up. Um, and so to get you up and running, connected to the internet quickly. Okay, next up on the list is programming environments. This is very important when choosing an Internet of Things platform. You need to be able to actually write code to deploy to your platform so that you can create a project. And the Particle Photon is one of my favorite in this regard. It has three main options for connecting, uh, sorry, for programming the Photon. And that is the web uh, IDE, which is known as build, then they have a local development environment they call dev, and then you can use some command line utilities. So if you want to get some really tight integration with some other um, application, you can do that through the command line interface. And so really, if you're just getting started, the, the web IDE is what I recommend. You can get in, write some code, deliver it over the air, your photon, as long as it's connected to your Wi-Fi and powered on, will get that update and start executing that code. But then as you want to get 
and uh, get more complicated and grow, the platform grows with you. You can switch to the local um, build environment as well as the command line tools. And so sort of the, the platform grows as you do. And so that's something that I really like about it. Okay. Features. Nope, I'm gonna step back for just a second. One more thing, a little bit of a drawback on the programming side. You can set it up to do everything locally, but even by default, like the local build environment and the command line utilities are using the cloud to do compilation. And so you will still need, even though you're working in a local environment, and that's great for collaboration through like GitHub and things like that, even though it is local, you're still gonna need a connection to the internet to build unless you do some extra setup to really pull into a local environment, which is a bunch of extra work. And so that's just something to note about the programming environment, the local environment for the particle photon. Okay, now features. This is one that I've talked about lots in the past, and that is every time you choose an Internet of Things platform by doing a line-by-line -line spec compare, a puppy cries. Don't do it. It's my, it's my least favorite thing. I hate when people do line by line. This is running at 120 megahertz. Raspberry Pi is running like 1.2 gigahertz. And RAM and RAM and GPIO and GPIO. I hate comparing platforms by that. However, when you're choosing a platform, you need to at least make sure that the features will meet your project needs. Do you have enough GPIO pins? Do you need pulse width modulation? Do you need I squared C or SPI protocols? and can it handle those. And so it is important to know about the features, just don't get hung up on a side-by-side -side feature compare because you'll end up, uh, I think you'll end up making a mistake on choosing your platform that way. Okay, so features of the Particle Photon, it's got 18 uh, mixed GPIO, and by mixed I mean it can handle digital and analog input and output. This thing even has a DAC on it, a digital to analog converter, meaning you can put uh, in your code, you can write uh, a, a value, it's a 12-bit DAC, and so a value from 0 to 4096, and that pin will create an analog voltage, which is a pretty cool thing. There's not a lot of Internet of Things plat hardware platforms that have DACs built into them. A lot of times you have to pick that component up separate. So it's got a DAC on board. It can handle all the standard interfaces, serial, SPI, I squared C, I squared S. Um, I think I said serial already. Um, it's got 120 megahertz ARM Cortex M3. Again, I don't compare that with the you know the dual core or quad core processor that's on the pi or something like the intel jewel uh, just make sure it's got enough uh, oomph for your project and so i, I think the it, it'll do pwm uh, see if i'm leaving anything out good set of features i, I mean I, I think it's got all of the standard internet of things features that you would find on any other platform and even a couple of extra like that deck i really like that deck um, okay, let's talk power. This is another big consideration. And really, I, I like to tell people to simplify this down to, do you want it to be battery powered or not? For, for just getting started, if you just can answer that question, you have enough information to make a good platform decision. Uh, because running off of a battery versus plugging in a wall, if you can plug it into a wall, who cares how much power it uses? Um, you're not gonna run out of it. And so, um, for the particle photon, uh, what I really like about it is it, it can do low power if you want. Now you can plug this in power wise to your USB port on your computer, power it no problem. It'll take 3.6 to 5.5 volts in, so pretty good range there. Um, you can actually power this, I know it says 3.6, but you can actually power the photon, and I have done this with my Internet of Things button, with two AAA batteries. and so. That's, uh, that's an option, or you can use like a power brick like I've used in a couple of my other projects. And so uh, definitely able to battery power this. Its deep sleep current is 80 microamps. Now what that means is theoretically, theoretically, you could run this thing in deep sleep on a couple of AA batteries for about two and a half years. Now, Having it in deep sleep forever isn't very interesting. It's an Internet of Things platform. You need to wake up and connect to the Internet, which is where the high power usage comes in. I think this thing's going to run anywhere from 250 to 400 milliamps of current draw when it's connected to the Wi-Fi. But if you can wake up, connect, and then go back to sleep, this is something that you definitely can run off of battery power. So that's important to know. The other thing that I like to talk about in power consideration is the pin tolerance. 
some platforms that are 3.3 volts like the photon is. Its system voltage is 3.3 volts. So whether you put in 3.3 or 5.5 volts, I'm sorry, 3.6 or 5.5 volts, the photon itself is running at 3.3 volts. The IO pins are gonna output 3.3 volts when you do high on the digital pins. But uh, talking about pin tolerance, most of the digital pins on here are five volt tolerant, meaning if you have a five volt module that's talking at five volt levels, you can connect it directly to the digital pins on the Photon and not worry about breaking anything. You cannot say that for some other platforms. The Onion Omega, for instance, runs it, I think it actually has some five volt tolerant pins as well, but uh, the Raspberry Pi pins uh, are gonna run at 3.3 volts and are not five volt tolerant. So if you put five volts into them, you're gonna have a problem. So that's just something to be aware of when you're looking at power on your platform. Are the pins five volt tolerant? Because lots of modules still run at five volts. And so um, Photon has got you covered in that aspect as well. Okay, I think that's it for power. The last uh, part category is sort of a double category and it's documentation and community. Does a platform have great documentation? Does it have a thriving community? Because eventually you're going to get stuck when you're trying to figure something out in your project. And really what this is, is is there a place that you can go and get documentation on what you're trying to do or find examples? And so that's where the Arduino wrote the book on this, the documentation, and they built a worldwide thriving community of makers that you can draw from for inspiration and examples. And the Photon, luckily, especially with the new announcement of the version two of the document of the library stuff, can actually run a lot of Arduino uh, code right out of the box. You copy it over into your Photon project and you can run it. And so you sort of inherit a lot of the Arduino community um, with the particle Photon, but it has its own thriving community. If you go onto Hackster.io, you'll find hundreds of people, thousands of people that are doing particle things, followers, and hundreds of projects that you can look at for inspiration and examples. Their documentation is second to none. They've done a very good job of documenting. No issues there. You should be able to find what you're looking for. Uh, I feel like it's very clear and, and well organized. And so documentation and community for the Photon, I would give an A+. And so I've talked about this before. The Photon is definitely my favorite platform for learning the internet of things. If you're just getting started and you're having a hard time deciding between the platforms, it's pretty hard to go wrong with the Particle Photon. It's, it's uh, one of my favorite. The recent survey that Mauser and Hackster teamed up on also listed the Photon as voted best for learning internet of things. And so um, that's if, if surveys and things matter to you. Uh, it, it ranked high in that regard. And so I, I think it's a great platform, it has a lot of strengths, and I really feel like lots of projects, if you have a project idea, I feel like the Photon can probably have you taken care of, unless you need, uh, one thing that you would steer clear of the Photon for is if you're doing high, like if you need real-time video and you need a monitor connected and you need to do video processing, it's not gonna be able to handle things like that. But small maker projects, you should be good to go. And so that's it. That's the, the wrap up um, on the Particle Photon. It's a great little platform. It's a cheap flat platform. It checks all the boxes for getting started if you're interested. And so uh, if you have any questions, specific questions about getting started, or if you're thinking about buying one, you still have questions after watching the video, please, please reach out to me. You can do that in the comments below. You can find me on Twitter at Kevin Sidwar, or you can always email me, Kevin at Sidwar.com. I appreciate everybody watching Daily IoT, where together we're learning how to make the Internet of Things one day at a time.